We're back this week from beautiful Armenia to bring you your latest crypto capsule, the weekly recap of all the developments in the global crypto ecosystem that you need to know. And all is in less than 60 seconds. Here we go. This episode is brought to you by Q9 Capital, a platform I personally use. Q9 are bringing a private wealth experience in one of the broadest product sets in crypto directly to young professionals, high net worth investors, wealth managers, and corporates. They're offering free cold storage to all new clients and a 2000 USDC trading bonus. Check out the link above for more details. It was another crazy week in the crypto world. Morgan Stanley announced that it will enable its wealthy clients to invest in three different crypto funds. The bank also published a research memo stating that Bitcoin can have a role in a diversified portfolio, writing that a 2.5% allocation to Bitcoin in a typical 60-40 equity bond portfolio could improve returns on both absolute and risk-adjusted basis. In Canada, the first Bitcoin ETF that was launched last month already crossed a billion dollars in AUM. On the policy side, the People's Bank of China mentioned that small transactions using the new digital yuan would be private to a reasonable extent, but that complete anonymity would be impractical to help prevent any type of criminal activity. In the US, US Fed Chairman Jerome Powell mentioned that Bitcoin may not be substitute for the US dollar, but could be substitute to gold. On the regulatory front, the Financial Action Task Force released an updated draft guidance that expands its remit to also include stable coins and decentralized finance. And it was reported that India is looking at introducing a bill that would prohibit all cryptocurrencies in the country and instead provide a framework for creating an official digital currency to be issued by the Indian Central Bank. That's all for this week, folks, and see you all next week.